Letter from Germany, from the New Yorker, January 26, 1946. The country around Dachau is beautiful. When in 1933 the Nazis built their concentration camp outside of the town, they also built an adjacent summer rest and recreation area for the SS. That part of the camp not dedicated to rest and relaxation was liberated last April 29th by American troops some of whom came upon a string of 39 gondola cars standing on a spur that led into the camp. Each car was lo loaded with dead bodies clad in the blue and gray awning stripe uniforms of con concentration camp prisoners. Joel Sayer. The 800 block of Washington Street in Marion was an elegant array of stately mansions anchored on one end by the Sweetser House, reputed to be a favorite of Mar Chicago's Marshall Fields himself, and near the end of the block, the elegant home of banker George Webster and his soon-to-be famous wife Marie. In between were the residences of Marion's new financial elite. A walk up Washington took the stroller past Gethsemane Episcopal Church, First Methodist, and Temple Congregational Church. A block further and a pedestrian encountered the bustling commercial and entertainment center of the city. The area, planned by developers Butler and Mason, was the show place for Marion's gas boom success. In 1900, one of the Washington Street homes was that of Joel and Nora Sayer. The family had moved to Marion from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Eastern glass manufacturers were eager to expand to the area due to the discovery of natural gas and the proximity to Chicago markets. The elder Sayer worked in the management of the Stewart Eastep Plate Glass Factory. His wife Nora established an interior design business and a photography studio. A few years after the birth of their son, also named Joel, the prospering family moved to another booming industrial city, Cleveland, Ohio. The family placed young Joel in the Columbus School, a preparatory school for bright children of the well-to-do. While in school, the boy became close friends with James Thurber, who later achieved fame as a writer. At age 16, Sarah was rejected as he tried to enlist in the Army upon U.S. entry into World War I. Eventually, young Joel would join the Canadian Army using fake documents and was posted with the Canadian Expeditionary Force in Siberia. After the war, Sayre attended Oxford University in Britain and later Heidelberg in Germany. Returning from Europe, he began his career as a journalist, first in Columbus, Ohio, later working his way up to a crime reporter on the New York Herald Tribune and as a contributor to the New Yorker magazine. Sayre would be a player in what many have characterized as the golden age of 20th century American writing. After some success with three novels, Sayre went to Hollywood and became a screenwriter, his most memorable contributions being Gunga Din and Annie Oakley. At one point, he partnered with the very talented and very difficult William Faulkner on several screenplays. Sayre is mentioned frequently in the memoirs of literary and film stars of the era. Apparently, he was not only a good writer, but could hold his own in the epic carousing of the likes of Ernest Hemingway, John O'Hara, and F. Scott Fitzgerald. During World War II, Sayre became a war correspondent covering the Persian Gulf Command and the famous Yalta Conference. At war's end, he returned to the U.S. and began writing for the New Yorker. His letter from Berlin informed readers of the fate of post-war Germany and the beginnings of the Cold War. He would continue to publish in, the, in Life and Time magazines Throughout the 1950s, in 1962, Sayre Sayer took a teaching position at the Annenberg School at the University of Pennsylvania. He died in 1979.